everyone. This is Katie Lapidaro with BWB TV. I'm here virtually with Jackie Faust, the CEO of Agios Pharmaceuticals. Thanks so much for joining me today, Jackie. Great to be here with you. Virtually, virtually. Yes. <laughs> and so just to start off, I'd love if you could give us a little bit of background on both yourself and Agios. So I've been uh, the CEO at Agios for about a year and a half, and I was on the board for a couple of years before taking the CEO uh, role. And previous to that, I was with Celgene, a, a large uh, biotech a company that has since been acquired by Bristol Myers Squibb. But way back, almost 10 years ago, in fact, about 10 years ago, uh, we had a partnership at Celgene uh, with Agios. So I got to know Agios over the last 10 years uh, from that. Uh, experience and know the company uh, really well. So I've had a long career in healthcare, but uh, the last 10 years in, in some way, shape, or form involve uh, Agios. Great. Thank you. Now, we know that Agios is well known for its work in oncology, having discovered two precision oncology medications and bringing them to patients in just 10 years. Can you tell me about the company's evolution and how you began developing treatments for rare hemolytic anemias? We were founded uh, with a scientific platform in cellular metabolism, and we have uh, stuck with that over the our entirety of our lifetime. And the first concept that our scientists had was to bring the science of cellular metabolism to cancer. And so we did that, as you mentioned, with uh, uh, IDH inhibitors, and we have two of those drugs on the market. And interestingly, even though they're in the cancer space, they are treating rare mutations of um, a relatively rare form of cancer, acute myeloid leukemia. So we were already by some definition in rare diseases. So by continuing to um, exploit the science of cellular metabolism, we've also found that there's a lot of opportunity for those biologic pathways in non-cancer indications. And in fact, there may be even more uh, broad applicability uh, of that in non-cancer uh, indications. And so back in around 2016 or so, we took our first um, clinical stage asset into patients, Midipivat, uh, for the treatment of a very rare um, blood disorder called pyruvate kinase deficiency. And, and we saw that it worked. And now we have uh, ideas, and we'll probably talk about that today, to expand that uh, drug into multiple indications for diseases that are non-cancer uh, blood diseases that cause severe and lifelong consequences for uh, those patients. And the, the first wave of those is going to be in rare uh, diseases. Great. Perfect. And I know you just kind of alluded to this, but can you tell me about the three diseases that you're researching Midipevit for and what a patient typically goes through? Yeah, so the first one is a very rare disease called pyruvate kinase deficiency, and it means that um, the patient has a genetic mutation that causes them either not to produce enough of an enzyme that's necessary to um, it, it's part of the chain that fuels uh, red blood cell health and uh, energy for those cells. And there's no approved treatment options uh, for that disease today. Um, it's a lifelong disease. It can be quite uh, devastating. Uh, patients have severe dietary restrictions. These patients have severe anemia that can cause them just a lot of problems over the course of their uh, lifetime. Uh, they often may have to be transfused uh, to get blood transfusions. They get iron overload from trying to treat their constant anemia, and that can impact uh, the liver and the heart, and over a long period of time, it can cause just significant organ-related uh, issues. So um, it's not just anemia and fatigue and things like that, which are bad enough. And if you've never had that, it's maybe hard to appreciate why that's severe, but the ongoing consequences are quite severe. The drug we found along the way also works to Act, work, activate what we call wild type pyruvate kinase R. So even if you don't have the mutation and you have another disease that um, where you need to activate that component of generating energy for the red blood cells, you can benefit from the drug as well. So we've now studied the drug in thalassemia, which is both uh, in both alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia patients, and sickle cell disease. So 
sometimes people are a little more familiar with sickle cell disease because the number of patients impacted by that is a, a little higher than some of these other ones. But all three uh, diseases cause uh, have lifelong implications. They cause severe anemia, fatigue, and then some of the other things that uh, we talked about are common across them. In addition, with sickle cell disease, patients can have severe pain crises because of what happens with their red uh, blood cells. They can uh, get occlusions uh, in their arteries and, and sort of all sorts of things that are, are quite um, devastating. So. Yeah, that, that definitely sounds very interesting. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on how Metapivot works and why you think it may be able to help patients with all three of these diseases? Yeah, so it's quite interesting as I as I mentioned, you know, we we knew in our early science that the drug would work on the genetic mutation associated with pyruvate kinase deficiency. So that's how we started. And then as we um, took the drug through the early stages in healthy volunteers and continued to study it, we found that it activates wild type uh, as well, which is why we can take it into thalassemia and sickle cell disease and potentially other uh, hemolytic blood uh, anemia uh, diseases. So the, the way the drug uh, works in with the, the PKD patients where there's a mutation, it essentially binds to um, unstable enzymes and holds them uh, together and then allows them to function properly. When activating wild type through two mechanisms that I don't want to get too technical about, but it um, increases something called ATP, which provides energy to the red uh, blood cells. And it also reduces something that is called 2,3-DPG that, that impacts how much oxygen the cells can retain. So through, through that um, approach, coming at these diseases in a couple of different ways, we both provide more energy to the red blood cells. We allow help them retain more um, oxygen, they stay, the, the blood cell membrane stay stronger in some of these diseases, it can be weak. And so the cells just don't survive as long as they um, should. Uh, on average, red blood cells in a healthy person should survive like 120 days or so. And in these patients, it can be, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 uh, days or, or much less than what they, they should do. Great. Now, these days there's a lot of conversation about gene therapy as a potential treatment for various genetic diseases. What type of medicine is Metapivot and what benefit may it have for patients? So it's a great question. Uh, Metapivot is a small a molecule oral uh, medication. So it's a pill that a patient would uh, take every day. Uh, very convenient, safe. Uh, you don't have to go to the hospital and all the, go through any extensive you know, prep to take it or anything like that. So uh, that's great. And since these are lifelong diseases, potentially that convenience factor is really important for patients. But we think that it's great that these patients have more treatment options. And so so theoretically, you could have gene therapy, which probably would get used in younger uh, patients because you might want to, you know, get to those kids really early and deal with that uh, genetic uh, issue. And then we think that may uh, serve a certain segment of the patient population, while other uh, therapies, including ours, which are you know oral or even other modalities, would provide good uh, treatment options. With gene therapy, we think it's very exciting and we think patients and physicians need more treatment uh, choices. It, it does have a certain complexity around kind of what you have to go uh, through in terms of preparation to then um, receive the therapy and not everybody responds to it at 100 percent and I think we still have a little ways to go to see how durable those responses uh, are but hopefully gene therapy is going to cure some patients and the ones that it doesn't, you know, we'll have other options like uh, Metapivat. So we're excited about it. And, yeah. and we, we actually think it's great for many companies to come in and serve these underserved uh, populations of people with these diseases. Definitely. That sounds wonderful. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for your time today and the dedication you've made to the rare disease community. We look forward to hearing more about the exciting initiatives that Agios has underway. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thanks so much for tuning into this segment of BWB TV, and we will see you next time.